Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Entitled God-Tiered Guest vs. Night Audit, The Explosive Showdown Over a Sold-Out Hotel. The second story, A Tale of a Pushy Worker and a Troubled Karen Ended with the Police and an Arrest. The third story, When the Museum Director Quits, A Story of Sabotage, Boardroom Drama, and a Fundraiser in Jeopardy. The first story is, What do you mean you're sold out? I am God-tiered. I demand a room. So this happened last week, and I've been dying to post it but decided to wait a while just in case. To add some context, my hotel has a type of reservation where you can just reserve a room with a phone number and that's it. The thing with this type of reservation is that it automatically cancels after three hours. When you make this type of reservation, you have to agree to that multiple times before you can get a confirmation number. I was working the night audit during Ultra Music Festival weekend, so I was already on high alert. Ultra is always a crap weekend to work at my hotel. Last year, we had a huge fight break out in the lobby. The year before, someone broke into our kitchen, ate some muffins, and made a huge mess. I found her in the morning when I wanted to get a snack before leaving. That was fun. So this year, I knew it wouldn't be another chill night, so I was on guard. I start my shift about 11 p.m., and up until 1 a.m. it was pretty chill. No one was calling me, no one was asking for anything, no walk-ins. I start to feel pretty good and decide to relax a bit. Little did I know this was only the calm before the storm. I get a walk-in and check them into our last room. I'm just about to start the audit when in comes an entitled piece of garbage. M for me, and EPG for entitled piece of garbage. M. Hello. EPG. Hi, I have a reservation under the last name Garbage. Now, I have a confused look on my face because all of our arrivals have already checked in, and I don't have any other reservation. Sometimes my hotel, if a reservation is prepaid, the afternoon shift will check them in. So I check our checked-in guests. M. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not seeing your reservation here. Do you by chance have a confirmation number? He pulls out his phone and shows me his call log. M. Um, EPG. I called and confirmed I had a reservation. M. Oh, okay. Well, like I said, I don't have any reservations here. All our guests have already checked in and I just sold our last room. He goes outside and goes for a smoke. I think it's over and done with, but I was wrong. He comes back in. EPG. I made a reservation with my phone number. I check all of our canceled reservations and lo and behold, he did have one. Like I mentioned earlier, if you make a reservation with just a number, it gets canceled after three hours. He made his reservation at 4 p.m. and expected us to hold it until 1.30 in the morning. M. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Like it says when you make your reservation. With a phone number, that reservation is only good for three hours. I see here you made it at 4 p.m., so it automatically canceled at 7 p.m. And I'd love to give you a room, but we're all booked up. EPG. I'm an executive black level super high up god tiered member. I know how the reservation works, so give me my GDMF room. Personally, I find it funny when guests or anyone thinks they can get their way just because they start screaming and cursing. So I smiled and this peeved him off even more. EPG. MF, I want you to call corporate right the F now and tell them how rude you are to an executive black level super high up god tiered member. I want you to put them on speaker so I can confirm that they fire you on the spot. I will take your effing job and demand they put me in an effing suite for free. F you stupid fat F. I'm not skinny. I am a bit on the fat side, so this kind of peeved me off. So I dropped all pretense and refused to be respectful. Before he started cursing and being mad, I was going to call our sister hotel and get him a room, since I confirmed they did have rooms. M. Listen, man, I can call corporate, that's fine. But there are a few things I can guarantee will happen. One, they will confirm that we have no rooms, so they'll know I can't pull a room out of my A and give it to you. Two, they will not fire me. And three, they will tell you that we have no membership tier called Executive Black Level Super High Up God Tier. You're honestly not even close to what it's called. Four, I will speak to my GM and he will be revoking your membership. And finally, five, you will be on our Do Not Rent list. I've also called our sister hotels and they will not be renting to you either. Good luck finding someplace to sleep tonight. He's obviously peeved and walks outside. I don't take my eyes off of him. He comes back inside with his phone in his hands and demands my name. I tell him my first name and that's it. EPG. What the F is your last name? I'm gonna get you fired. M. Don't worry about it. I'm the only one here with my name. EPG. F you. M. You too, bro. He looks like he's about to throw something at me, but he gets in his car and drives away. After that, I do the audit about an hour later and finish up my shift with no problems. Just thinking about him still makes me mad, haha, <laughs> oh well. I spoke with my GM the next day, 
and he confirmed that the guy was at our highest tier, but he immediately revoked his membership and put him on our company do not rent list for all of our other claims to see. Oh, how amusing to see how sometimes ego and aggression come back on insolent guests like a boomerang. This guy who thought he was God was hoping he got something you didn't have, which you repeated to him several times, and then conquer you with his shouting and swearing. But as it turns out, he had a brief lesson that politeness and respect work much better. Your confidence and calmness in this situation is worthy of respect. You didn't let him peeve you off with his aggression and raise the bar for similar guests, leaving them with no way out. And your response to his swearing was simply masterful. You too, bro. And eventually he left and his membership was cancelled and added to the blacklist for rentals. It's a story of how arrogance and rudeness can lead to total failure. That's the kind of karma they shared that evening. The second story is... EP wanting free drinks because they taste awful. Little backstory. Currently I'm a 17 year old male. That happened two years ago in 2019. I was 15 and I was working part time in a local Starbucks. I'm from Bulgaria. Nobody asked but I had to slip this in. It was my third month and I really enjoyed it so far. Until one day, I go an EP, Karen, B, call her whatever you want. Story time. Normal Saturday, sunny, hot. It was summer. Then a Karen walked into the store. Imperial March. At the beginning, everything looked normal. Just came to the cash register. Ordered a hot chocolate for her son and a cappuccino for herself. Everything's fine. She paid, no worries. Got to a table and started drinking. Also, she got a lemon flavored cupcake, which isn't uncommon. I hear herself talking on the phone that the cappuccino tastes amazing, and our son, who's 9 to 10 years old by appearance, tells her that it's amazing and wants another one. It was a small cup. A lot of kids ask for a second one. At that moment I was talking to my coworkers, one of whom is my girlfriend, and another two very close friends, and weren't looking at the lady anymore. Then she came to the front with that Karen plastic smile like a factory made doll, 50 years of old plastic, probably more, and tells me that the hot chocolate tasted awful and she would want a new one. I let that slip and gave her another one, without paying for it, which was my mistake. So he brings it to her son. He again says it's amazing and asks for a third one. I hear that and say to myself, it was GD time for Karen Mode to be enabled. Yet again, she comes and says that it tasted awful, no matter that her son drank the whole cup in a breath or two. So I'm getting peeved and explain to her that it's impossible to taste awful, due to the fact that her son drank it in one breath. The conversation as follows. Absolutely the same. I remember that like a bright day. EP. Thank you for giving me a second hot chocolate. However, it also tasted awful, so we would like a third one and let's hope it's better. Me. That's impossible for two orders to taste awful. In fact, your son drank both of them and said that they tasted amazing. EP. Are you calling me a liar? Also, you've been eavesdropping on us? That's illegal. Me. Getting angry. Ma'am, I'm telling you what I've heard. Also, eavesdropping is not illegal because you were talking in a high voice that I could not stop hearing. EP. So you're admitting to it? I'm calling the cops, you little bee. My supervisor heard the argument. What's going on here? EP. Manager, your employees are harassing me by giving me spoiled and not for consumption drinks. He tried hitting me more than once. My friends and girlfriend. He did what, you female dog? EP. I've called the cops, and who do you think they'll trust? Some stupid high school students or a friendly woman with his angle? At that moment, she starts hitting herself to have some marks. Unfortunately, that was at about 10 a.m., so no other customers. I believe it was Saturday. EP screams. Ah, stop hitting me. Starts crying. The police officers arrive. PO1 and PO2. What's going on? EP. It was about D time you got here. Those people are harassing me by giving me spoiled drinks and hitting me, see? Shows her self-made marks. PO1. Is that true? Me. Of course not. She was trying to get free drinks, because obviously they were tasting awful. All this time her son was sitting at the table, playing the D Nintendo Switch and not listening to us at all. PO1 got the kid to speak to him, while PO2 talked to us and checked the CCTV recordings. Karen got white as a sheet of paper when she heard we have CCTV. Then she called her kid to tell the PO how we'd been harassing him by calling him names, which was a lie again. She tried stopping the PO from checking the surveillance and starts telling lies about us, that we act inappropriate, pointing to me and my girlfriend. However, the PO checked the recordings, clearly showing her in the wrong. They got microphone recording, so we heard her son saying this tastes amazing. She thought about it for a second, giving the excuse that we somehow photoshopped and edited the video, which is impossible to edit someone's voice like that. PO2 arrested Karen for harassing, lying to a police officer and stealing from us. They called Child Protection Services for the kid and his aunt arrived to pick him up. On exiting, the Karen shouted something between the lines. My husband's the owner of a tech company. He can buy you as slaves. Another charge for violation of human rights. 
Said or done, it doesn't matter. You'll hear from my lawyer for those lies. All of you will get in jail. You little words I don't think they should be on the internet. We all burst into laughter while they were taking her away. I said, tell your lawyers that they're welcome for a cup of coffee. I neither got a call from the so-called lawyers, nor did any of us get fired or arrested. Her child said I'm sorry when the aunt took him. End of story. What made her think that complaining twice for a drink would make it better? It's bizarre. Ah, poor Karen. She came for the free drinks and ended up with no freedom and a very bad reputation. Apparently, her angelic behavior and acting skills didn't help, and her screaming that her husband owns a technology company and could buy us as slaves is a masterpiece. Karen seems to have turned out to be quite an imaginative person. But how unlucky for her that in today's world almost all stores and establishments have CCTV cameras with a microphone. God, her delusions of video editing made her even more stupid. Hopefully she'll get the education she deserves from the law, and her child will be in better hands, and you won't run into people like this again. Who would have thought that working at Starbucks would turn you into a superhero in dealing with Karen's drama? The third story is, have fun with your fundraiser without me. I wanted to wait about a week to see the ultimate crash and burn. It didn't disappoint. Our story starts in February of this year. I was hired to be the director of a local museum. I love museums. I want to work nonprofits for the rest of my life. The then director had decided along with the board that she would stay on the payroll for a month and help me transition into the role. And that's where the difficulty started. Whether she hated me personally or hated me because I was her replacement, I have no idea. But she made it her mission to make my life hell. Everything I did was incomplete or incompetent. I was awful with guests and donors. My designs were disgusting. You name it. By mid-March, she was going to be done. She retired to spend her twilight years with her family and enjoy her retirement. Imagine my surprise when she shows up at the next board of directors meeting as a voting member. And the abuse continued. Every month, every event she volunteered at. I reached out for help and everyone else on the board encouraged me that she was just about to retire. So if I could just make it till then, we'd all be in the clear. So I waited, grit my teeth and tried to push through it. Come the November board meeting, she announces to everyone she's going to be president. Not she wants to run, she's going to be president. And no one else wants to do it, so she gets the position. I get a call from a board member that knows exactly how she treats me, tells me what happens with the new president and that she is stepping down. I quit effective immediately. I won't continue to be abused. Fallout slash karma. One, December is the museum's biggest fundraiser. When the old director slash president heard I quit, she tore down every piece of prep I had done for this event. She had two weeks to redo two months of preparation I had been working on. The advertisement running in the newspaper was pulled early, so I'm not hopeful. 1A, we already took payment in advance for this fundraiser, so I imagine people are going to be very unhappy. 2, the board was gutted. Overall, the board consisted of 12 people, most of which were new people, two of which were 10 plus year veterans with a lot of volunteer experience. A full half of them quit the board, including both veterans. Oh, how sweet it is to see karma come back and bring trouble to those who deserve it. The former museum director was clearly determined to make your life unbearable, but it seems that she eventually faced the consequences of her own behavior. And of course, your abrupt departure left a whole host of problems in its wake, from a huge fundraiser in December that's now in danger of failing, to the departure of half of the board members, including two veterans with extensive experience. How sweet it is to see fate playing with those who deserve their share of unpleasant surprises. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.